Hello, my darling extraterrestrials. I am Kim. This is Dust Motes and Velicor. And I had a bit of a scheduling error this week. By scheduling error, I mean that I was literally halfway through To Kill a Kingdom when Overdrive, the library app, snatched it away from me. Uh, it was very, very good. And I want to know how it ends, but uh, you can't renew ebooks on Overdrive. You have to request them again, and it's just, it's automated, so um, I didn't really have much of a choice about it. So. <laughs> and then when that was taken from me, I started to read Dread Nation, but I was not fast enough. And I'm going to the Renaissance Fair tomorrow, and I'm going to the LA Festival of Books on Sunday. And really, I just I had to make this video today in order to upload it by Monday. I really want to get to the point where I've got several videos in the bank so that I can, you know, have a life. But that's not how my life seems to be working out right now. So I am doing the A to Z book challenge, but not quite. More like I'm doing the A to Z bookstagram challenge. There are like eight different versions of this challenge. Basically, I'm going to explore my book collection and find 26 titles that begin with each consecutive letter of the alphabet. Hence A to Z. Some people do it by author's last name, but I have a relatively small collection of books, so I don't have enough authors to justify that. So I'm gonna do it by title. According to the guidelines that I'm using, articles like A and the can be ignored. And according to those same guidelines, uh, because someone out there has a guardian angel and wrote this in, for the letter X, we can use a title that has the letter X in it. Cause I don't know about you, but I don't know many books that start with X. I just don't. I will try to give each book a one sentence summary but no promises because I am not known for my brevity or my wit. Let's get started. The first letter of the alphabet is A, in case any of you forgot that. The Accident Season by Moira Fowley Doyle. This book is really, really weird. The bad luck comes back every October and something bad always happens. Next is B. Blue Lily Lily Blue by Maggie Steve Otter. Oh goodness. This one is book three of The Raven Cycle and I have no way of describing this book in one sentence. It's, it's weird. I seem to really like weird. Is it weird that I feel like the biggest task of this book challenge is going to be moving the little things that I have on the bookshelves to get the books out. The letter C, a court of... It was just Harry Potter, we're okay. <laughs> the letter C, a court of thorns and roses by Sarah J. Moss. This is a Beauty and the Beast retelling of a young huntress who gets kidnapped into fairyland and nothing turns out as you expect. If you haven't checked these out, I really recommend them. Letter D. The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. This is about a young woman who, I can't tell you that. I can't tell you that either. This book is about a young woman who lives in a town that still has a very vibrant relationship with the Fae. And that's all I can tell you. The Evolution of Mara Dyer by, wait, don't tell me, Michelle Hodkin, I should have known that. These books I blasted through. I, I think I read all three of them in three days. Mara Dyer is weird. Mara Dyer kills people? Mara Dyer is very troubled. Let's go with that. That's evolution. Evolution. H-I-J-K. No, wait. Um, what's the letter in the alphabet that comes after E? F. F. Thank you. As in W-T-F. We're headed to F. 
As in WTF, Daniel, you go away. the alphabet? Daniel, go away. I'm busy. Ha! The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. Oh my goodness. This book is a tragic romance that will rip your heart out of your chest and still make you love it. John Green, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, John Green. Our next letter is G. Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. High fantasy, higher stakes. For H, we have Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. This book is about a young lady named Sophie who is absolutely convinced that she will never find her fortune. But that's not quite how it goes. She gets cursed by a witch to become an old woman and then, you know, goes and lives in Howl's Moving Castle. The Invasion of the Tearling. This book is much more political than the first one. This one gets very much into the nitty gritty of how to run a kingdom and how to facilitate a war. My next letter is J. This might be cheating, but this is the screenplay for the movie Joy and it's very interesting. If you haven't seen the movie, it's very good. Oh my goodness, Jennifer Lawrence does an incredible job. But the screenplay itself is really remarkable. You should check it out. We are on to K. The The King of Atolia by Megan Whelan Turner. This book is incredibly political and also like very tricky. <laughs> and I love them. And they're amazing. And everyone should read them. For L, we have The Lost Plot by Genevieve Cogman. This woman can write an adventure like nobody's business. So good. So compelling. Yes. M is for The Martian by Andy Weir. If you haven't read these books, they are dark and hilarious and scientific and improbable. N is for Naked Empire. This series took a weird sort of turn where basically Terry Goodkind kept trying to convince people that they didn't know that they were free and also what freedom meant. And these are all of the things that you should do to really capitalize on your freedom that you do have, by the way. This series, this is the eighth book in the series, and it's a very interesting series. It starts out much more comedic, and then it takes this very self-righteous turn. If you like high fantasy, I would honestly be surprised to hear that you hadn't read them yet. But if you're just checking them out for the first time, feel free to just, you know, stop. Just give up when they start getting really annoying. Like, I think around the fourth book was when I started noticing this trend, and then... This one just really, really takes the cake. Uh, Far from the land he rules, his life and powers draining with each day, Richard Rawl must help a desperate people and teach them the meaning of freedom. For O is a book that Booktube adores. Our Dark Duet by V.E. Schwab. No, it's by Victoria Schwab. Different alias. This book is the sequel to The Savage Song. They live in a really interesting world where there are demons and there's rebellion and there's like a lot of socioeconomic issues and also like political and their town has been quarantined. It's really interesting. So you should read them if you haven't already. <laughs> For the letter P, we have Places No One Knows by Brenna Yovanoff. This book is magical realism in high school, where a young woman who is totally an insomniac astral projects into the life of a young man who is 
constantly inebriated. He's just always drunk. And that's mainly to combat the massive amount of empathy he feels for literally everyone around him. It's very interesting and it's beautifully written. You should check out this book. Oh my goodness. The next one is cute. Oh, and this one will be really easy. I was just about to be worried, but this one is really easy. Boom. Super easy. See? Queen of the Tearling and Queen of Atolia. Two incredibly political books that everyone needs to read. Do it. R stands for The Raven Boys by Maggie Stiefvater. This one is the first book of the series. I already showed you Blue Lily, Lily Blue. Blue Sergeant is the only non-psychic in a house full of psychics. And she meets four boys on a quest for a dead Welsh king. And it just gets weirder from there. <laughs> S is for Sabriel by Garth Nix. These books are a fantasy epic in an alternate world where the dead walk and are controlled by necromancers. I'm so mad at myself because I pulled out Sabriel and I could have pulled out Saga. It's okay, guys. It's just Goblet of Fire again. <laughs> <laughs> but Saga is such a good, such a good comic book. Oh my goodness. They are beautifully illustrated by Fiona Staples. They're written by Brian K. Vaughn, who wrote Runaways. And really, they're just incredible. And they are not for the faint of heart or the young of eyes. Uh, please know that they are quite racy, but they're delightful. T is for Thick as Thieves by Megan Whelan Turner. This is now the third Megan Whelan Turner that I have pulled out for this challenge. I love Megan Whelan Turner. This is the fifth book in the series, so you really have to start with The Thief or The Queen of Atolia as your first book in this series. But after that, just like, go crazy. They're so good. U is for The Unbecoming of Mara Dyer. This is, again, the second book of this, this series that I have pulled out for this challenge. But... They're so good. They're worth the second mention. Yes. So my copy of Vicious hasn't come in the mail yet. So I don't have any books that start with V. I do, however, have the DVDs of Veronica Mars, seasons one through three, and the Blu-ray. But that's not a book. But if you haven't seen them, they're so good. W is for The Wrath and the Dawn by Renée Adier. These books are about a young woman who lives in a kingdom where the king takes a bride every night and kills her every morning. Shahrazad volunteers to be his bride and then connives to keep herself alive by telling the king stories. It's very interesting. Now to the dreaded X, except I realized after I did that whole build-up thing with the guidelines that I own a book that starts with X. Xenocide by Orson Scott Card. Oh, I read these books out of order when I first read them because they're not well-numbered. You can read them out of order, but I was very confused. This is a sci-fi epic about impasses and the attempted cohabitation of three species on one planet. Three sentient species, I, I feel like I should clarify. Sad to say, I don't think I have any Y books either. Clearly, there is a deficit in my book collection, and I just need to buy more books. That's definitely what this means. Z. Do I have any Z books? I have no Z books either. This is a sign. This is a sign from the universe that I deserve more books. I like this. This is good. 
I'm really amazed that I was able to, I, like, I have an X book, I have multiple Q books, I have many, many W books, I don't have V, and I don't have Y and Z. Those are so, like, there is not a zookeeper's wife or a you before me in this. And I mean, I'm not, I don't have a thousand books. I have maybe 200? I've never counted them before. But I have a decent amount of books, like so much so that my roommate Dan makes fun of me because he calls me four libraries. I might be five libraries now, actually. Every time I get a new shipment of books, he's like, you're another library now. And I'm like, no, I wish. I aspire. If you like what I'm up to here, make sure to subscribe because I post something every Monday and you might want to stick around. I don't know. Now tell me, what is your favorite tag video? How many licks to the center of a Tootsie Pop? How does lightning work? Please tell me in comments. I'm woefully ignorant about all three of these subjects. Aviento!